So Geometry Notes is just a ton of fun. And what I'm going to be teaching you today is how to make cobblestone in Blender, completely procedurally. You can see here, I'll quickly show you the um, node setup here. It's very, very simple. Don't be intimidated at all. Um, I would definitely say this is a beginner friendly tutorial as far as Geometry Notes goes. And you can see this is the result here. This is really nice looking cobblestones. And like I said, it's completely procedural, including the actual shader which we're also gonna do, we're gonna just be relying on a little attribute to kind of randomize this a little bit. And it's a really cool node, I'm gonna show you in this one, I'll quickly bounce back to it. It's gonna be this um, Mesh Island node, which you're gonna love learning about, because it's gonna enable us to kind of take advantage of the individual Mesh Islands, so we can randomize things a little bit. So um, yeah, definitely watch. This is a fantastic, fun beginner tutorial, and I will be uploading the finished blend file to my Patreon. So those of you supporting the channel on there will be getting access to that. You can check that out in the description. If you're not a Patreon, you can still watch this. It's completely free. All you need is Blender, which is free. So let's jump in. So we're just gonna open up a new Blender document and we'll actually just grab the default cube. And we're gonna go over into our Geometry Nodes workspace here. And we're not gonna really be using the index here. So we'll just kind of drag it over to the side, just kind of minimize it. Oops. I always mess that up. I don't know how I still can't get it. But anyway, it's optional, but I've just minimized that. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna click on the cube, right? We're gonna go ahead and click over here on a new um, network. So just gonna open up a new network and you can call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call it cobblestone. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off here by creating a grid. So we'll just go shift A, we'll go search and type in grid. Let's get a primitive grid. And we'll just plug the mesh into the geometry here. We can actually get rid of this group input. We don't need it. We just want the grid going in here like so. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this grid size. Let's scale it up. I'm gonna make it 3.5, okay? So scaling it up a bit. And we want some vertices here. So I'm gonna go with like 25 by 25. I guess if you go over here to your drop down, you can actually come here and enable the wireframe under the geometry. So you can kind of see what sort of topology we're working with. Okay, so with that done, we now have our grid. We wanna um, mess it up a little bit on purpose. So it doesn't look like perfect squares. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna get a merge, and we're gonna get a merge by distance and place it on this cable. And then what we're gonna do here, if we actually drag this value up, you can see it merges, but it's too consistent. Um, it's just too perfect. So what we're gonna do, we can simply just take this distance here, or not the distance, but a selection, and we can only randomly select selection. So let's grab the selection, drag on it, and then we're gonna type in random, and just get a random value. And now you can see it really messes it up good, which is exactly what we're looking for. So we're gonna come here with this, and we'll leave it as a Boolean, but we'll take the probability, let's take it up to 0.75, should work quite well. You can also mess around with the seed if you wanted to, but what we need to do is just come here and tweak this distance. So at the moment, it's a bit too crazy. So let's just drag through till we get something that looks kind of appropriate. So I'm gonna go with um, 0.25 should be fine. As you can see here, that's looking really good. So now what we wanna do to make this look a bit more like stone is we wanna also go shift A, search and get a dual mesh. So type in dual and get a dual mesh node, place it on the cable. And now it looks a little bit more like stone, not little triangles. And it's kind of like splitting it in a very interesting way. So it kind of looks like little cobblestones. We're then going to split the edges so we can scale them as individual elements because we don't want them all to be one slab. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go shift A, search, we're gonna get a split and get a split edges, place it on the cable. So it's now actually splitting these edges. And to be able to visualize that, let's just simply go shift A, search and get a scale and get a scale instances, whoops. Sorry, let me try it again, scale, and scale element. Okay, I shouldn't have said scale instances, that was a mistake, we're scaling the elements, not the instances. We're gonna place it on this cable, and what we're gonna do is, we'll leave it as face and um, uniform. We wanna come here to the scale and just drag it just a little bit into the negatives, just like this. Just so we get a little bit of distance like that. We might come here and change it later once we apply the subdivision, because that's gonna kind of cram things up a little bit. But from here, we're just gonna go ahead, shift A, search and get an extrude. Oops, I keep misspelling it, extrude. So you're gonna type in extrude, get an extrude mesh and place it on here. And you can see by default it does this. So we're just gonna come here to the offset and just bring it down 
And you can see we have our cobblestones, but one of the things that just makes us so unrealistic at the moment is that cobblestones are not this perfectly even. Kind of one of the charms and beauty of cobblestone roads and pathways is that they're very inconsistent with the height. Um, so let's go ahead and randomize this. So we're gonna just take the offset scale. I'm gonna drag on it. Let's just type in random once again, grabbing a random value. And then let's just mess around with these. So we're gonna make the smallest amount 0.1. And let's just bring this max down so it's not as crazy high. So maybe, I don't know. You can, you, you're completely free to kind of mess around with these values all you want. It's, it's more of a personal preference thing at this point. It's not really a right or wrong. So you can see here, we've now randomized that and that's looking a lot better here, okay? This is exactly what we're kind of going for. So let's now move up past the extrude mesh and let's go shift A, search and get a sub. And we want to get a subdivide mesh, not a subdivision surface, okay? Don't get the two confused. We want to get a subdivide mesh and put it on here, like so. And then we want to go shift a search and get a subdivision surface, a so subdivision surface, and then place it next to here. Because if we actually didn't have this, I'm just going to mute this one, you can see it just cr crawls, up, crawls up too much. So with the subdivide mesh first, it kind of tightens things up like that. So, um, you know, you can kind of come here to the subdivide mesh and mess with the level to make it more smoother before it gets the subdivision surface. So I might just go with something like that. I think it looks cool. I'll go with level of two here, but it's up to you how you want to do that. For now, I'm really not liking seeing this um, mesh overlay, um, line overlay here. So I'm just going to go here to the geometry tab and just kind of get rid of that wireframe here, like so. Okay. So now let's just go shift a search and get a set material, place it over here. Let's just go over to material tabs. Um, by default, we already have a material. So we're just gonna call it cobblestone. And we have a material here because we use the default cube. If you don't have one, you could just hit plus. So then we're gonna come here to the set material. Let's just get that cobblestone material. We'll get back to that later, but for now we need to do a few things. So shift a search, let's just get a set shade smooth. So set shade smooth, place it here. So now we have smooth shading. Let's move up a little bit. And the thing is, if we were to actually go into our material editor now, our shader editor and add a material, we couldn't really randomize the, the shading and color on the individual tiles. And the reason is, is because it's not recognizing them as their own individual um, little islands. It's just all one mesh as far as the shader editor is concerned. So we can do a little bit of work here to make that happen. It's not too complicated. This is really handy little node in Blender called the Mesh Island node. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna type in Mesh Island. And I love this node. So we're gonna take this Mesh Island node and we're gonna go Shift A, search, and get a map and get a map range. And we wanna compare with the island index. We're gonna take that island index and plug it into the top value. And then we wanna just take the island count and that'll be our max input. So it'll be comparing with the max, okay? Um, so float and linear are what we wanna go for, but this is not gonna be randomized enough. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go shift A, search and get a noise texture. And then we're gonna take that result, which is giving us those compa comparing the index values here. We're gonna take the result and we're gonna plug it into the vector here like that. And then we can really kind of mess things up here with this. So I'm gonna just maybe take this up to seven here on the scale. You can always mess around with it later. And I think we'll leave the, maybe take the detail up to three. But that's all we need for now. And then let's just take this factor and plug it into the group output. And then we can take that factor and use it. So what I'm gonna do is just to be organized, I'm just gonna press N and I'm gonna to go to my nodes here, or the group, okay? And then I'm gonna come down here to the group sockets, I'm gonna click on, double click on that factory plugin. I'm just gonna call it um, random color, so C-O-L. You can call it whatever you want, okay? As long as you remember exactly how you spelt it, okay? So I'm gonna call it random col for random color. And then what we can do now, make sure to save, is you can go into your shading workspace. I'm gonna go over to my render properties and I'm just gonna change it to cycles. And I'll make my device GPU. Now you might not have a GPU, so just stick to CPU and my max samples, I'll just make it 45. So we're gonna go into our camera view and we're gonna go Z and we're gonna go rendered. And you can see this is what we have. And I'm gonna actually click on the cobblestone here. We have our cobblestone material that we added earlier. And what we wanna do, we wanna grab that attribute we created. So we're gonna go shift A, search and get an attribute node. 
And we're going to come here to the name and we need to remember that so it's random call. Now, if you've used any sort of capitals or any spacing, it matters because this really does look at the exact attribute name. Okay. So if I were to take this um, factor now and plug it into the base color, um, it's not really doing anything. And that is because I think I've messed something up here. If I actually go over to my um, modifiers and I go to my output, um, output attributes, I need to actually put the name in here, which is where I messed up. So I'm just going to go random call. There we go. And now you can see that works. So um, yeah, I named the wrong thing. Okay, I should have put the attribute name in this little space here, the little box here. So now we have this to work with. So I can go shift a search and I'm going to get a, um, I think I'll just get a mix and um, I'll go with the color, place it on here. And what I'll do is I'll go shift a search and get a noise, get a noise texture. And I'll plug the factor into the B here. And that kind of gives us a way of randomizing things a little bit. And then what I can do, I can grab these two, kind of move them up and go shift a search and get a ramp place it on this cable. And now I have a way of dragging these two kind of closer together and I can kind of mess around with how this looks like. So I'm going to grab this one here. I'll make it like a dark Brown just for a bit of contrast like that, not too saturated. And then I'll grab this one, drag it down and make it more like a sort of sandy stone kind of color. So you can mess around with this all you want, completely up to you. I'm going to go with something like that. And it's looking too smooth. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our noise texture and we're going to go shift a search and get a bump and get a bump node. Let's plug the factor into the height and then plug the normal into the normal of the principal shader. And we want to take that strength down to 0.2. And what we need to do when we come here to our noise texture and let's take that detail up to 12 and that's already looking a lot better. And the scale will take to like 20. And the roughness will leave it 0.5, but you can kind of see here. Now we really have this looking awesome. You can always come here to your principal shader and you can mess around with the roughness to give it a little bit more gloss. That's up to you, but this is kind of what I'm going to go with. And you can see now we have some really nice looking cobblestone. So what you could do now is uh, if you wanted to, you could add in a plane, scale it up nice and big. You can always move your camera in closer. Um, obviously, this is not really officially part of the tutorial. I'm just kind of setting this up to show you what this really looks like. You can kind of add in a proper area light or something. And you can mess around with how, you know, your lighting angle and all that sort of stuff. But you get the idea. I'm just trying to show you how nice this stuff can look. Okay, so go ahead. Um, yeah, render this out any way you want, but you get the idea here. We now have some nice looking cobblestone. So I'll quickly render this just so we can have a look. So I can go render and render the image. And there we have it guys. So I really hope you have enjoyed this tutorial. I'll be uploading the finished blend file to my Patreon. So those of you supporting the channel on Patreon will get access to this blend file. Um, thank you for watching. Check out some other content and I'll see you guys next time.